All right, hello everybody. Today is September 10th, Sunday. We're already one third of the way through September. Today I am doing a video in this animated chart style to show you basically Venus and its aspects to Jupiter and Uranus and the inevitable opposition to Saturn and the also a preview of the solar eclipse in Libra. Um, now, first of all, it's important to consider that we Venus has just stationed direct from retrograde, and Venus has already been making aspects, square aspects to Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus while in retrograde motion, and I can just back it up to show you what this is like. Um, so here you can see around the beginning of the month, September 3rd, we had Venus stationing direct at 12 degrees. Uh, prior to that, Venus was in retrograde making these squares to Jupiter and Uranus. And things to consider, first of all, so Venus was doing this retrograde, going through this retrograde Gazemi where she was under the beams of the sun in combustion, so it's a kind of a death rebirth moment for Venus. I had made a video that was called, um, you know, a creative rebirth, right? But Venus is now reborn into the morning star position, meaning that Venus has visibility in the morning before the sun comes out, and Venus, however, so it's it's basically like the, a, a young Venus as opposed to an old, mature Venus. And Venus is going to be making the same aspects to Jupiter and Uranus, but without the influence of the sun being there. So it's kind of so one thing that we can say about the retrograde is that it, when a planet is in retrograde motion, the influence may be maybe a little bit more unconscious. Whereas now that Venus is separated from the ray of the sun and is able to hit these aspects with Jupiter and Uranus, Venus will have the opportunity to do so in a much more conscious and deliberate way. And if we look at what the actual meaning of these transits, what these planets mean, Jupiter generally is like a teacher or a benefactor, a kind of a force of generosity and altruism. It can also, Jupiter can also stand for something that's a little bit indulgent. And when Venus and Jupiter are in a square aspect, one of the things we may have to look out for is maybe being overindulgent and, or kind of, um, you know, spending money or something like that. However, we can factor in that this particular period of time may be a, you know, it could be a time of economic growth. It could be a time when business is doing better. It could be a time when you're making um, uh, gains in terms of followers on your social media channels or something like that. It could be a time when business is good. It could be a time when, it could also be a time though with Uranus that there's something about the influence of Uranus on Jupiter, when you put Jupiter and Uranus together, there could be things like scientific breakthroughs. There could be things like technological advancements and technological achievements. Um, Uranus has to do with sudden breakthroughs and insights in the realms of science and technology. Um, and it also has a certain revolutionary capacity. There's a certain um, interest there in the emancipation or liberation of uh, the oppressed. And with Venus being a general signifier for women, there could be conversations around either women's liberation or more freedom and equality and different gender issues or different things to do with sexuality or something like that. Uranus can also be somewhat shocking and controversial. So there may be some sort of, you know, disturbing thing comes to the surface with Uranus. Um, but in general, what 
I'm basically what I'd like to kind of emphasize with this transit is that you can kind of look at the good and the bad in a sense that there is it is generally speaking a good thing for Jupiter and Venus to be an aspect because you have the two traditional benefics meaning planets that signify generally good things talking to each other in communication with each other and we may feel kind of encouraged feel a good vibe or feel sort of supported to in a sense of growth or uh discovery of new things um but you know it's also good to keep in mind that if we go with rick tarnas's description of uranus as being a kind of a prometheus prometheus was the god of foresight so it's all about having an eye for what's coming ahead uh, eye to the future an understanding of future technologies and you know are these technologies here to liberate us and make our lives more free or are we enslaving ourselves to technologies are we enslaving ourselves to our own consumer habits you know are we do we feel free by going on a fashion shopping spree or do we feel like a slave to the corporations you know i think that's kind of some of the things that we may see from the uranus influence um so as we keep going we can see that venus will be perfecting the square to jupiter at six the 16th of september and then as we keep going from there, Venus will be perfecting the square to Uranus at around tw the 29th of September. So basically, this whole Venus-Jupiter-Uranus dynamic is in effect for the month of September. And Venus is the ruler of Taurus, too. So it's I would say it's fairly encouraging because Jupiter and Uranus are there to serve the needs of Venus. Venus is there to kind of make a demand on these planets and these demand these planets will serve Venus's interests the best they can in this situation and it's generally looking pretty encouraging. I didn't mean to go get into this stuff too, but it's also interesting to note at this date 29th you can see that there is a sextile, a perfect sextile by a 1 degree orb between Mars and Libra and Venus in Leo. So there is some Venus Mars communication happening there with reception as well. So all in all, I think the month of September is generally kind of encouraging for Venus, but look what happens once we progress further. So Venus approaches the 29 degree of Leo. Um, and the fixed star Regulus is around here. I did some other video before about the fixed star Regulus being around the end of Leo, beginning of Virgo. Um, but what happens if you notice that Saturn in Pisces has retrograded to the zero one degree of Pisces. So as soon as Venus enters Virgo, Venus is in for a kind of a rude awakening um, in that v Virgo, is the place of that's the fall of venus it's the one sign that venus does not really do very well in i mean in terms of exaltation dignity um this is because virgo is all about let's say there might be a certain attitude with virgo that virgo is sharp in, in a way of being critically precise right but when it comes to venus this kind of critical precision is not really so good for Venusian things and there may be a kind of like being painfully aware of if we factor in this opposition with Saturn painfully aware with of our shortcomings painfully aware of our own limitations painfully aware of our own isolation and our own not you know not being good enough not measuring up our own imperfections our own it could also be like with guess saturn's about being you know age and and illness and things it could be feeling unconfident due to our age or unconfident due to maybe some health problems or unconfident because we are poor and financially uh you know not in a good position or something there could be all sorts of things that cut that are highlighted by this venus saturn opposition um that 
you know, while Venus was making these squares to Jupiter and Uranus, things could look all very sunny and optimistic and hopeful. But because we are intelligent astrologers and we have the gift of using applications like solar fire or having um, good astrologers to follow on the internet that that lets us that will let us know what's happening in the future we can see that we need to hold our hopes and our ambitions and our uh, you know lofty uh, dreams of the future in a kind of sober um, and measured kind of expectation because we know that Venus will be making this opposition to Saturn and it doesn't look very good. And the thing about this too, is that as, you know, I mean, whatever, Venus aspects to Saturn happen quite often, but just to put, this is just like, you know, let's just look at what happens as we progress along here to the next lunation, which is going to be a solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. Now, I don't have the south node shown here, but you can see the north node is at 25 degrees of Aries, which means the south node is at 25 Libra. And then we have, when you have a new moon close to the south node, that means it's a south node solar eclipse. Now, this is bad news for a number of reasons. We just talked about how Venus is in not very good dignity in Virgo, and Venus is in opposition to Saturn, and so all these sort of like optimistic, hopeful things that we may be experiencing during the times when Venus is making these aspects to Jupiter and Uranus in the month of September, you know, that's going to be put in contrast to this moment in October when Venus is in opposition to Saturn, and there's going to be a solar eclipse in Venus's sign. So it's basically, you know, one of the things about a solar eclipse is that to understand the eclipse, you understand what the ruler of the eclipse is doing. And the ruler of the eclipse is in a not in a very good position at all, right? This is, <laughs> um, if anything, you know, at least Mars is in Scorpio for this. Um, so, well, things are not looking very good on for th things relating to Venus, at least we have a strong Mars and Scorpio for Mars stuff. Um, but, yeah, and, and the other thing to consider, too, is that if for every, anyone that has placements in the cardinal signs, which are Libra, Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn, you are going to be feeling this one. Um, and this is going to be, you know, we had a pretty powerful, I would say, solar eclipse in Aries during Aries season in the spring. And this is the this is the next kind of installment of that Aries Libra eclipse cycle. And personally, I'm relieved because I don't have planets very much in the cardinal signs, um, but for you cardinal placement people, you better buckle up for this one because you're in for a ride, let me tell you. Um, and so I'm just giving, trying to give you a kind of a measured and a realistic kind of a balanced approach to show you both the good and the bad that we, we are in for um, with it, this upcoming eclipse in Libra and the aspects that are going to be made by Venus. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I may go into greater detail with some of these, uh, whatever, the meanings of some of these archetypal dynamics in my longer format videos in the future, but I'll leave it at this for now. Again, thank you very much. Thank you for your support.